Today is July 1st, 2012. This Sunday, join one man on his quest to gain further knowledge in the field of art. We give you the k and Kale Show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Keenan Lafferty, host of the k and Kale Show. Today is episode 41, and we are going to be doing a tutorial on placing your character's feet on the ground and different planes and stuff like that. I'm going to show you how to do that. But before we get into that, we are going to be going through the usual. Bring it on up. Today we are starting with my favorite thing, which is actually the Facebook, as usual. So thank you guys once again for submitting your plethora of beautiful artwork. Once again, it is always awesome. Look at this. Bubblegum. Princess Bubblegum from Adventure Time in realistic style. Love it! You guys are so creative and... Oh, man, look at that ribbon. I didn't see that earlier. Heck yeah! Ribbon's a babe. So, uh, once again, thank you guys for submitting, being part of the community, commenting on each other's work, so on and so forth. Continue to do so, and I will love you forever. Moving on to the Twitter. For those of you who have not subscribed to the Twitter, I post when I am submitting new videos to YouTube so you can be updated the moment they go live. However, I do not post videos of when I am washing my car or pissing my pants while riding Supreme Scream at Knott's Berry Farm. Now, with that out of the way, we will move into the tutorial. So, alright. So, today is going to be, in fact, in fact, uh, g dealing with a subject that has plagued me for eons. Plagued me for eons like this navigator bar. Get down here. There we go. So yes, uh, and that problem is, or that subject is, getting your character's feet on the ground. How do you make it look like they are actually standing on a plane and balanced? As well as as well as making them feel like they're alive and they have weight on their feet. So I will show you how to do that. As soon as we get this, one moment. So the first thing we are going to do is we are going to open up the new document, as usual, and we are going to begin sketching a few things. So let's say, um, yeah, let's just, let's just draw in our usual kind of stick figure, dude. And I'll show you the line of action that you're going to want to achieve on this. So let's start with just the head, right? So a big thing that really helps me to put some life and weight into the character is to think about these S shapes going through characters. And this also comes in handy when you're drawing like, um, let's say like cute anime girls. Like having these S curves going through them really kind of adds to their uh, cuteness, I guess you could say. So what this represents is actually like the spinal column as well as like um, the legs. And I'll show you how. So we're going to be rendering this character in like a three-fourths kind of top-down position just to show you what's going on. So, oh, and by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but my, my voice is a little deeper than usual. And that is because yesterday I went to Knott's Berry Farm, California, and had an amazing time. However... Uh, there was a lot of screaming going on on these rides, and yeah, uh, I lost my voice because of all the screaming, but it was worth it. I hope that that freaking crow is driving me insane. If it keeps, keeps making noise, I'm going to go out there and kill it. I will kill it! Alright, so we got the basic um, torso and hips down going down here. So remember, we are going in three-fourths. Wow, this crow is driving me crazy. Hang on. Okay, so the crow threat has been extinguished. Now let us get back to the tutorial. Um, so again, remember, you want to think about the plane. Oh, <laughs> my glasses. I have transition lenses, so when I go outside, they change. If you watch very closely or time lapse this video, you'll see them go back to normal. Amazing. Amazing. So a good thing that one of my good friends, Iron Stylist, does at work. 
is he, he sort of sketches in these awesome planes, right, of where the character is going to be standing. And this represents the, the ground plane, right? Obviously, going back in space. Going back in time and space to the vanishing point. But this serves the greater purpose of showing, okay, where is this guy going to be standing, right? So um, right now he looks a little bit like off balance. If that was the plane, like he'd probably be toppling back. So what I'm going to do is actually, let's move this. Let's move this plane back until it looks about right. And then we'll place his feet on that. Cool. That looks good. And again, I, I work in a light color because these are like the guidelines. The guidelines. Guidelines are good. So this leg is going to be really foreshortened, right? Because let's say um, I want the weight to be on this leg, right? And then this other leg is going to be kind of out, okay? Remember that general S curve that goes through the muscle like that? And then we'll have the foot down here like that. Keep in mind where where this foot is existing on that plane, right? And this might even tie into uh, foreshortening legs. I'm not the best at doing this, so um, I wouldn't I wouldn't take this as the tutorial on foreshortening legs. But um, this is just a good general idea, I suppose. And and a lot of the the rules and guidelines that we talked about in the earlier tutorial on drawing legs still exist here. So, all right, so now what we want to do is figure out where is this other leg going to go. And I will tell you, the easiest way to think about where the foot needs to be to balance a head is to almost drop a plumb line, like which is basically you hang it from something. It's like an old, um, it's an old measuring instrument where it would be like a, uh, a weight attached to the end of a string, and they drop it straight down from you know a point. So imagine there was a string with a weight on it going down in space, right? And it's kind of like attached here and attached to his head, right? Kind of go down, down here, right? So that's where the balance needs to be had. That is where the balance needs to be had. So let's see. In this case specifically, the leg would actually be going, like pretend this is almost the heel, right? Pretend this is the heel coming up, right? And then think of the leg is there, right? And, and let's straighten out the leg, actually. So let's make it one straight line. So the character is actually going to be standing like that. That's the edge of the toe. <laughs> See, so even though the leg is way out like that, or it's coming in and, and being foreshortened down like that, now you can see, wow, this character actually looks like it's balanced because there's weight being applied on this heel right here, even though it's just that shape. Also, keep in mind the simplicity of the shapes that you can get away with and how the mind sort of interprets those shapes. And that's a very fun thing to think about. And also notice how I kept that leg straight. You know, I didn't bend it because when you bend it, it feels a little less like there's like weight on it, like a weight of the body. And that helps to, um, to communicate that. Draw your center line up, and then you can draw in, you know, your arms, basically, like, like that. Let's draw on the other arm really quickly. Oh, that's a little, that forearm's a little messed up. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. Okay, so basically, here, let's zoom in on this. Let me zoom in and actually let me clean up these lines just to show you exactly what I'm talking about. It's actually worked out quite nicely. I like it. Someone who's as newbie as I am at, at doing this, I, I'm glad it worked out. So one more time just to clarify. Here is the knee. The knee is happening here, right? I'm going up into this muscle, right? Goes up to the crotch is right there. The other leg comes up like this, right? And th and this uh, bear in mind, this figure is fairly androgynous, so it can be male or female. Doesn't matter. You just kind of um, make the chest a little bigger, 
for, uh, or the shoulders a little bigger <laughs> if it's a guy, and then you make the hips a little bigger if it's a girl. It's not too, nothing too crazy. So the leg is coming down like this, right? And remember, in that earlier tutorial, that S line that goes from here and then down into this bone, right? And then the the calf muscle comes off that. But usually I don't I don't like to render that line too crazily. And then that bone connects to the ankle. So there's foot one, right? That and here's the Here's the ellipses that are happening there. Now for the other leg. See, all that you're going to see is just this. The Achilles tendon going back to the heel like that. And then that's the other foot. And see, and then you almost fill in the gap of what's happening here. But all you see is this foot right there. And you can say, oh my gosh, that man is balanced. That man is not falling over. He is immovable. An immovable object. Yes. So, that is the general idea that you always want to go for. And it always comes down to that plumb line. The plumb line guideline. So always remember that. Kind of drop it down from the head or wherever like the weight is. Here, another example. Let's do this one more um, in profile so you can see more what I'm talking about. Let's go back to our guidelines. Moving on. Okay, so this one's going to take place on a flat plane, just to show you what's happening in a 2D space. In two dimensions. It's hard to make it sound cool. In two whole dimensions. Tired of one dimension? Time for two dimensions. Alright, so let's have this guy... Um, so I'm doing some sort of like a uh, like a punch or, or a yeah that's how I'm doing like a punch I think that'll be nice okay so one thing that you want to do is consider your, your first action line which is going to be you know obviously doing this thing right going up and then straight out and then oh okay so that is your action line right and this represents you know the foot going up, and this represents the arm going out. Okay? So, first thing we want to do is draw in our head here. Alright? Just our head. Let's keep in mind the country pasta. So we are going to, that means that you vary up the angle that the torso is from the hips, and it makes your character look like he's twisting, and it has a lot of action and energy in him. So we're going to have the middle point for the chest be here, like that. Just kind of keep it general like that. Let's draw in the, the shoulder there, followed by our bicep, and then into this thing like that. And that will represent our fist. Okay, so you can see all this energy that is being applied this way, right? Let's go ahead and do this, finish that up. And we'll have this other arm like hmm. oh this other arm up like like this. Oh, and I always draw in this little X to show where he's looking. So you always want to be looking where you're punching. Always be looking where you're punching. So we'll do that. Okay, there's his neck. Okay, but now the question is this. Where do we place the feet to make him look like he's grounded and balanced? And I will show you that. Most of the time it is a plumb line from the head, but you want to just basically figure out where all the weight is. And that is usually going to be in this region, right? The chest and the head. So let's kind of go from the middle here. Let's go straight down, and then we hit right here, right? 
All right, so now the challenge is with all of this energy and this stuff going outwards, we gotta figure out how we're gonna place the foot here. So let's see. Let us see here, with also using some country pasta. So let's turn the hips this way, right? And actually, <laughs> this is actually going to be challenging for me as well. So I'm trying to figure out, I was like, hmm, how can I draw this? I'm making it look weird. In fact, you know, what might be good to do is, I think it's just because his legs are like perfectly, like on, perfectly um, straight. Like you want to add a little bit more, add a little bit more um, energy into it. You could bend the legs. Like he just took a step forward. Oh, yes. Let's have this torso bending a little bit more like that. This crotchal region. Crotchal region. Okay. And down like that. And then this leg will go out like that. And then it'll be up he'll be up on his toe. Alright, so that's a general idea of how you would do that. The pose looks a little bit awkward. And I think that's probably just because it's just it's straight on. And also I think maybe it's the head. The head's a little <laughs> bit stuck over on the shoulder. Let's fix that. Oh, also I think it's because this line that I drew right here, look, talk about interpreting things with your with your with your brain. Um, because I drew it that way, it looked like his chest was up and he was punching like that, and it looked like he's about to fall down. When really, when you punch, it should be more straight and level. So let's see. Let's go like this, like that. So the chest more exists in this area. Like that. So you got the abs coming down like that. Yeah, I see. So that that helped it quite a bit actually. Yeah. Okay, so that helps illustrate that helps illustrate how we place that foot there here. Again, it's usually like the heel or the ball of the foot to give this punch some energy. And actually another way that you could do this, another way to give it even more energy is to kick the leg up like this. Have the foot come down and have the ball of the foot actually supporting that weight. That makes him seem like he's more up on his toes. Get it? And it will make it look less like he's just like posed, you know, like just standing there. And then another cool thing that I like to do is sometimes I'll just like lasso this. And with the power of Photoshop, you can actually move his leg around like that. But actually, I think it looks really nice right there. And sometimes being off balance can work in your favor and add motion. Again, like uh, referencing running, obviously, you're not going to be balanced perfectly like this because you need forward momentum. So you're going to be in a diagonal type of, um, type of balance. And again, that'll probably work for a strong punch as well. So, but this is a level grounded punch. So hopefully that helps you guys out. Let's see here, yeah, what else do we need to talk about? So this is like a general thing on placing your feet down. And again, I told you, I gave fair warning. Uh, this is not my most powerful suit, but it is something that I think I can offer some insight into as far as the, the plumb line thing. One more thing, let's, let's do a girl's body specifically. When we were talking about like the, the cute anime girl pose, let me talk about that. Because, and, <laughs> and you know what, I actually need to, uh, this brings up another good point, I need to go into another tutorial on doing a female body again, because I look at the old one, and it's it's good, but it's not, it's like a general, like, female body. I, I think I should go into a tutorial on 
how to draw specifically like more um, like cute attractive female bodies or whatever you, you would call it like with the use of curves to make it look pretty and sexy so if that's something that you think you would be interested in please yes let me know in the comments so again remember on this one we are going to be placing the feet on a ground plane and we are going to be using this S curve I'm showing you how this works so first thing you're going to do is draw the head of your girl right and then kind of drop down the S like this we are going to use this for our benefit so first thing you're gonna do is oh and this is um, this is an interesting form of country pasta I don't know if it is country pasta but um, I'm gonna say it is um, varying up the level of the shoulders like this right and then the hips like if they kinda go against each other like this it looks really it looks nice so keep that in mind so let's drop down the neck like this Let's draw in our little our torso, like that. Again, uh, on girls, the shoulders, uh, they come in you know, a lot closer than guys. Guys have like this big frame, usually. Well, most guys do. I don't really. I have more of a girly body and feminine hands. These are artist hands. <laughs> so, but just a general rule of thumb. Um, the hips, like if I draw a line down, the hips will be about as, they will come out about as far as the shoulders themselves. Like that, see? So you can see all of the, the motion that is happening in this body. But now we have the challenge. Where do we place the feet? So let's drop a plumb line down from the head to here, to the ground plane. Which is going to be around there. So that is where our foot is going to go. So let's go ahead and draw that in. And again, this is just eyeballing. Her legs are probably going to be a little bit longer than usual, but that's okay because anime girls have monstrous legs and nobody seems to care. So a good way to start this is um, let us do our S-curve, another S-curve, coming from the crotchal region down the thigh and then down to the foot. Actually, I'm going to place the foot here. And then, whoop, quit lagging. No laggy. So on that first calf muscle, followed by this one. And let's draw a leg like that. Okay, so we have, oh wait, yeah, and draw on the heel. So we have our weight on this leg here. This leg is supporting our weight. And now what we can do with this other leg is simply place it behind. Alright, let's draw in this. Let's have the other leg. What should we do with the other leg? Let's just place it behind. Sometimes a big thing to do that I, I like to do with legs and a lot of other artists is they kind of like stick these feet together. Like there's a general like inward motion, right? Like after, once you reach the hips on the girl, like you don't want her to like be going out. Cause, and that's a, that was like one of the biggest things about the, the female anatomy thing that I didn't like. Uh, when I did the legs, I just I drew them straight kind of out, just normal. And to make them look more dainty and cute, you have the legs on the girls kind of moving more at an inward angle. And pay attention to the, the, the little like shape that gets made between the legs because um, guys' legs have more of a tendency to come together and actually touch, but girls' legs have a little bit of what people call the gap going on <laughs> between the legs. So make sure that you don't lose that because it looks really nice and it helps differentiate your characters as far as males and females. So there you go. This is just to help clarify which leg is in front and which is in back. And again, remember, like this ball joint here that goes into your hoof shape and then the toes at the end of it, like that.
and then the heel over here. And again, very simple shapes that represent quite a bit. Quite a bit. See, now you can see all the cool flow that's happening in here, like this, going up like that. Um, the knee is a little higher on this leg because it's, it's simulating it going uh, back in space. I don't know if it should be that much higher. I might go kick it down a little bit. But that's just to help show that the ellipses are going back in time and space. And this leg is coming um, more level. <laughs> they look like stockings. Mmm, sexy. The ellipses double as sexy stockings. So, yeah. Can't argue with that. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And again, we got the heel there. Remember when we dropped the plumb line down? Actually, the heel should be more there. <laughs> Let's fix that. Let's say the heel is more over here. In fact, like we probably won't even see it very much. So to help show that the, the foot is more turned, I just show more of this ankle, like that little bump. Just that little bump alone represents the ankle. And voila! You have the girl's legs properly placed on plane, which is right there. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, you know, I'm pretty I'm pretty satisfied with that. I like that. I like it guys, I like it. So with that, we will conclude. Today's lesson, episode 41 of the Kane Kale Show. How to get your character's feet on the ground. Before we go, however, before we lag, however, I would like to talk to you guys about the party that's going down tonight. Sunday evening, 10 o'clock server time in the Ysera realm of World of Warcraft. We are going to be meeting up in the Orc starting area, the trial of our Valley of Trials. And at approximately 7.15, 7.20, we will be making our way to Gallywix's Pleasure Palace. I will be leading the way and be basically transporting you via a rocket, which you can jump on and because uh, you can't get there alone. Like, I'll take you up to this spot on the cliff, and then I'll transport you there. We will be at this amazing pool, spa, awesome area. I will be playing music via the live stream, which I will place a link to down in the comments section. And we are going to have a great time tonight. And don't worry, if you can't make it this Sunday, I'm going to be continuing continuously doing them every Sunday throughout the summer until I say otherwise. So, be sure to be there tonight and show your support. Thank you so much for everybody who came last time. I hope you had a great time. We are going to have another great time tonight. So, bring your friends, have a great time, and I said that a lot, didn't I? Yeah, come and have a great time. And it's free to play, so no reason. No reason why you can't download the 10 gig file. Delete Diablo 3. I know you have that game. It sucks. So get rid of that. Join me tonight, and I'll see you guys there.